Hey, hey, hello everybody. This is Robin from Roaming with Rover. And this is Finish It Friday. Thank you so much for popping in today and helping me to keep track of what's going on. I gotta tell you guys, especially this week, I didn't have a lot of time for crocheting, but because I knew I had Finish It Friday coming up, I felt like I had a deadline that I needed to get something done get get the project done for you guys so just having this finish it friday is helping me get things finished and that was the whole point of this to begin with so let's see what we've got going on this week we still have one two three we still have four projects so nothing actually finished but we are making progress on pretty much everything i think so here we are with the granny Granny Square Crochet uh, Cocoon. It's going to be a cocoon sweater. There we go. Not a whole lot of um, progress on this. I found a mistake. Remember last time I showed you, I thought that corner looked wonky. And it was. So I had to take out only one row this time. I had to take one row out because it was when I was getting ready to make the connection. And here's the deal. What I'm doing with the connection here is when I get to the corner, that's where I'm increasing to the next row. And I'm, the way I'm doing the increase is with a half double crochet and then one chain, and then I do my three doubles. Well, I keep forgetting that chain. And so it keeps making it look all wonky and then three rows later, I realize it and have to tear it out. Well, this time it was only about, I guess one row because I was ready to make that next connection and I realized that it looked weird. So I pulled out one row looked back and figured out what I had done wrong and fixed it again. But again, this has no deadline. This is just, although it's starting to get cool, we are in middle of August and it was not warm enough for me to wear shorts yesterday. And you see, I've got a little, little uh, long sleeved, um, it's not really a jacket. It's just a long sleeve shirt, men's long sleeve shirt. Cause it's too chilly for me this morning already. And again, I'm still using the Red Heart comfort and <laughs> my ball's getting pretty beat up now and I finally I put a note on there this time to make sure I do that chain I keep forgetting to do that chain and it makes all the difference you wouldn't think one little chain would make that much difference but it's it really really does so that is the cocoon sweater and I think it's going to be done just about the time I'm really going to need it okay Project two, didn't even touch it this week. I know, I know, I feel terrible. So this is my Darla's, whoops, I'm seeing, oh, that's weird. I just found an extra crochet hook in my bags. Oh, that's why, because we change, we change sizes. This is, in fact, that's an interesting point. So this is a Darla Crafty Yarn Owl. This is her top-down sweater pattern. It's called My First Top. And no, I have not, I didn't even pick it up this week. Um, only because of time constraints. I didn't, ha I didn't have a lot of crocheting time this week. But one of the things um, that she does with this, in order to make it fit you the way you want it to, is part of the time you're using one size of hook and then you switch over to another size hook later on. And I, I'm starting to see that quite a lot in different patterns as a way for them to um, allow you to make it more form-fitting or like me, I don't like things form-fitting. So it's a little bit um, snug, not snug, but the fabric is a little um, denser at the top and then it loosens up down at the bottom and allows it to flow. And that is achieved by using different hook sizes. And in fact, I think there's even three different hook sizes that we use on this as it gets longer and longer. But I'm still loving the fabric or uh, the um, yarn. And as I see how it's working up a little bit there. Yeah, I like, I like the way it's working up. So I'm not, it's not in time out. I just literally did not have enough time to work on all my projects this week. So that is Darla's top and Darla the Crafty Yarn Owl. And I'll put links to her stuff down below as well. If you guys, speaking of links, if you guys are enjoying my videos, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe and uh, give me a thumbs up on this thing. It really, really helps. 
Thank you so much. Okay, the big project. The knitting, the knit sock. My last class was last week, so a lot of the knitting that I done was focused on this, on the sock. So as you know from before, the saga of the sock, I ended up, I was really struggling with the pattern and I ended up switching from left-handed knitting to right-handed knitting in the middle of this sock. This is the worst sock known to man. Ugliest worst sock known to man. But this is where we are. It's actually looking like a sock now. Wow, look at that. There's the cuff and the holes. The holes are from me not knowing how to do this loop knitting thing. The pattern was actually working out pretty decent. And then we switched halfway through because of, apparently I was needing to do something opposite. And anyway, that wasn't working. And then when I started doing the instep, somehow I was getting a yarn over and getting a hole in the side. <laughs> I'm telling you, every possible thing I could do wrong, I did on this thing. There's my little heel. You can see my heel. You can tell there's a heel there. It looks pretty decent on one side, looks terrible on the other side. And that's when we were really struggling with uh, the left-handed knitting thing and trying to get that pattern to work. You can see right down here, I think is where I did the stitch pickup on the inside. There's a ridge on the inside. And I'm not sure if that ridge is supposed to be there. I think that would maybe be kind of uncomfortable, but what do I know? There, there's the ridge from picking up the stitches. And then I started doing this part. And of course this is where you make it long and then you do the toe. Okay, so my last class was last week. I didn't get enough done to do the toe and we're gonna do the Kirchner, Kitchener, Kitchener. And so I was working on it a couple days ago and I was knitting away, trying to get it long enough to do the toe. And then it occurred to me, why would I put all that time in finishing this up to learn how to do the toe. I'm gonna go in at some point and have her show me the toe. We already know I'm not finishing this. I'm going to tear it all out and start over again. That's been the plan since clear up here. So I decided not to finish it. I decided to just tear it out. Look, that looks like one of those little mouths. <laughs> I decided to just tear it out now and start over. And when I get to that point, I'll have her show me what to do. And honestly, I've watched a couple videos. It doesn't look that hard. The Kitchener doesn't look that, that hard. Um, so I just wanted to show it to you guys, see how far I actually got. And this won't exist next week. I am tearing it out after this video. I have watched a couple of videos. Um, crazy, not, yeah, Crazy Sock Lady has the vanilla sock. And it is, she's got using this kind of a method. She's got using the little nine inch circular, which is what I wanna do. She's got doing the whole thing double pointed, um, just doing the heel double pointed. So all kinds of options. And I like the idea of doing the vanilla sock. So I'm not worried about, you know, how the design here and, and following the graft and all of that. So I think I'm going to do a vanilla sock. Or the other thing is I did actually see a video that somebody is doing this actual sock. And it's, you know, like I said before, it's the Dreams in Fiber, um, Hermones, Hermones. I know a lot of you guys told me last time, I'm like, oh yeah, Hermones Everyday Socks. Hermones Everyday Socks. She's got a ton of these patterns. They're all free. She has a handful that are paid for patterns, but... Um, the majority of them in here were free and uh, this is on Ravelry for free and there is a video a YouTube video of somebody doing this exact sock so I'm gonna watch it I started watching it when I was struggling with the left-handed thing and I gave up so I'm gonna go back and watch her video and see if I want to start over with this sock or if I just want to do that vanilla sock what do you guys think I should do? Just do the easy sock and learn better the processes 
or go back to this pattern and kind of finish what I've actually started on the on this sock with the all of the details. I specifically bought this yarn because the details would show up, and it does. The details show up very pretty in that. I like that a lot. Let me know. What do you guys think I should do? Or the other side of that coin is sticking with the vanilla sock with Crazy Sock Lady, knowing the instructions are going to be really, really well done. And that's kind of what I need right now. Let me know. Vote down below. Let me know what you think I should do. So this will not exist next week. I'm tearing this whole thing out and we're going to start over with something else. And I wanted to show you, I came across this. I have a friend. I have a friend. I know there's a surprise, right? I have a friend. Her name is Dot and she is an amazing seamstress. And every year for our birthdays, our little group of girls, our little group of ladies, she makes something. So whoever's first that year gets the item that she has made and the rest of us know what we're getting on our birthdays. So a few years ago, she made these bags. Isn't that gorgeous? And I just love, 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 love the cactuses and the, the sunset, the sky. And I just love this bag. Love it, love it, love it. And it's lined and it's full of pockets and little zippery spots. And it zips up too. The bag zips up too. This is a great, great bag. But for some reason, oh, I know what it was. This isn't quite long enough for me to use as a shoulder bag. And it was too long for me to use as a hanging bag. Well, when I saw it in the closet the other day, I'm like, that's a perfect project bag. It's a perfect project bag. It's a nice size and especially for a smallish like these socks. So when I get this all cleaned out and switched around, I'm gonna use this as my sock project bag. Isn't that a great idea? And which made me, I mean, I'm always using project bags and I like to have one for each project and even projects I have not started yet, but I've got the yarn picked out and I've got the pattern and I kind of like to put everything all together in a bag so that when I'm ready to start it, it's, it's ready to go. And I got to thinking, I do have several purses that I love. And some of them were kind of spendy back in the day when I used to spend money on purses. You know, a couple hundred dollars, not like thousands, like some of the bags out there, but a couple hundred dollars for a really good leather purse. And now I don't use them anymore. I don't use purses anymore. Where's my little, I use one of those little fanny packs. It's a, it's a little $20 leather fanny pack that Mr. picked up for me. And I love it and I use it all the time. And that came from living in the motorhome. You, 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 you get used to doing everything smaller. But I got to thinking, what a great way to use some of these purses that I love. And they're very good quality and they would make great project bags. So that's just, uh, that's gonna be something you're gonna, you're gonna see me in uh, the near future. Uh, some of my new project bags, for smaller projects, I mean, you couldn't put a, you couldn't put an afghan in there, but you could certainly have a sweater while you're working on it, or um, socks, or scarves, or hats, or any of the smaller portable projects that we do. And so that's gonna be a way that I'm gonna, I'm going to use, use, utilize some things that I already own and love and to do a project that I love too. I just think that was a great idea. I don't know why I didn't think about that sooner as I gather up bags because I do. I have a lot of project bags and I love them. For a long time, every time I went to the store, Hobby Lobby, I would buy one of these $2 bags and I, that's a great idea too. These make great project bags and I like because they're easy to wipe off and I can put them on the floor of my car and put them on the floor here and I don't worry about them. I don't worry about them getting messed up. Okay, the official Finish It Friday project is here. And this is my Christmas striped crochet afghan. The official, uh, here's the official 
paper of it. That's what it's supposed to look like. And this was an Annie's kit, striped crochet afghan. They have them all the time. And you can usually get the first kit either half off or 70% off or sometimes free, you just pay shipping. And then every month or two months or three months, however you set it up, they send you out a new kit with yarn to make three stripes at a time. I am doing this one, it's over there, and we'll get to it someday. But I had decided when I got this, I also wanted to do it in Christmas colors. And they sell one in Christmas colors too, but so I just copied their colors and went from that. So we, this week, we were doing, can you see it, it's this checkerboard. It's that checkerboard right there. I struggled with it a little bit, just a little bit because I was overthinking the instructions. Well, one of the advantages of getting these kits is they have a video for each one of the sections. So I finally broke down and watched the video after I tore it out twice. Because that's how I roll. And what I was doing was I was missing one of the steps. And See that? So it's such an easy design. It really, really is. So all you're doing is just like this. You're doing two double crochets and two chains, two double crochets and two chains. So you end up with that open, there we go, that open weave design. Well, then the next row you come along and you're gonna do two chains where this is and then two double crochets here but you go down to which it would be this empty space. So like if I were doing it here, I'd be doing two cro double crochets and I would pick them up here and here. And that closes this section off. And that's all there was to this checkerboard. Well, I was missing that step where I was closing this off. And I'm like, why is my checkerboard open? So instead of going all the way down to the lower one, I was just doing it right here. Very, very simple. And once I saw her do it one time, I realized what I was doing wrong. Uh, she did have you carry the yarn up the side sometimes, and I don't like the way that looks, and I'm hoping that when we do the edging on it, the finished edging on it, that we can clean that up a bit. And so I've got some ends to weave in, and I just don't love the way that edge looks. So I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that that will look nicer when we're all done. I'm not going to worry about it. So I got that stripe done. Got that stripe done, and that was... That was the commitment this week was to get that stripe done. So here's what it looking like so far. Yeah, we are getting there. Definitely getting there. And this one is going to be cross stitch or cross, crisscross. Can you see the little crisscross pattern? So that's the beginning of this week's. Where did I put that picture? <laughs> I wonder if it shows up on here. Yes. Yeah, but not very well. There, that's the crisscross, and that's what we're doing now. Is there just one row of that? I don't know. I gotta find the, here we go. Yeah, looks like there's just one row of that. So that ought to go pretty quick. Cause that's the one we just finished, and that's the in-between row, and that's the cross right there. Should have no problem finishing that this week. Then maybe, maybe, maybe I will have time. If I get that finished pretty quickly, which I should, because it's actually going pretty fast. Let's see if I can show it real quick. It's triple crochets. So you do, you know me, I don't ever do this kind of thing. So a triple crochet is just like a double, but instead you wrap around twice. And then you skip these, go into the third one, and I'm gonna do a triple, triple crochet there. Triple, triple, triple. And then you do another triple, but you go back. Did I skip two? Yeah, you go back to the first one that you skipped and do the triple in there. Oh goodness, it's getting noisy in here. Sorry about that. There you go, do a triple crochet there. And that's it. That's how you make that X, just like that. Easy peasy. See? 
that was way easier than I thought it was going to be. I was, I was nervous about that X there, but that was way, that's all there is to it. So I'm going to do that all the way across. And then that row is done. And then I will focus on, cause I'm going to tear out that sock. So then I'll spend some time on the Darla top. When I get this done, I'll spend some time on the Darla top to see if we can't make a little bit of progress there. So that's it for Finish It Friday. That's everything that we are we got done this week. And that is the progress on all the projects. That is the progress on all the projects. We kind of went behind on the sweater, but we definitely got ahead on this and made a decision on the sock and did nothing on the sweater. So that's it for this week. I hope that you'll join us for Monday Night Bingo and on Tuesdays where we have interviews of other talented creators and we have a wonderful, wonderful time with that. So that's it for now. We'll see you guys later. Stay safe. Bye-bye.